Hey guys, Santa R. Sunbury Line Ralph Van Jones. Today, we got another video for you. We're on location yet again. We're going to be starting a new video series where we're going to be documenting the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Clark Summit Halstead Cutoff, which is where we're at right now. Today, we're going to be starting at Milepost 144, which was the old Dalton station. And if you look over here, right behind me, you can see this is where the old station used to be right here. The station was believed, I built, I believe built in 1914. Um, the overpass was built in 1914. So I'm guessing the station was probably built around that time. So before we start working our way up to Benton Road, which we're gonna be ending today, I wanna show you guys some remnants of the old station that are still in the ground and that you can actually kind of see them. So right here is obviously the old platform. This is where the passengers would stand in order to wait for their train to come in. So basically, I'm on the platform right now. And as you can see here, right where the Dalton siding is, that would be the loading track. And then down by the signal there, there would have been a storage track. And I believe there was a freight house up here as well. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Um, like I said, this is the old Dalton station right here. This station was, I believe, like I said, I believe it was built in 1914. I'm not exactly certain. But you can see part of the platform right there and part of the foundation. So we're going to go ahead and start working our way north. We're going to Milepost 145 today, which is where the Benton Road overpass is. So before we continue on, I want to point out a couple things here. So the first thing I want to point out is where the freight line used to be, right here. So right where we're at now, this is the passenger line. And then to my right would have been the freight line. And then the loading track would have been right here. And I think there was another track up that way a little bit. Not sure. Now this line is being worked on. Like I say, you can see a lot of new ties have been laid down. Um, since the 2020 video we did where I'm gonna admit I was wrong. I didn't realize it was DLNW that built it and I thought it was CP So yeah, we're gonna get started here We got some very interesting things to point out to you guys today And I'm hoping you guys are excited for this Let's see if we can find any dates here for you Let's see if we can find any Here we go. 131 RE OH BSCO Lackawanna, June 1942. Okay, so this rail here, the east rail here was laid in 1942. Let's see what else we can find. Ah, here we go. Here's another one. Section 146, Algoma, Canada. So this is some Canadian rail. CC, 132 pounds RE, January 1972. So this rail right here is Erie Lackawanna era. And this rail right here is Delaware, Lackawanna and Western. So the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western obviously built this cutoff here to decrease total time for passengers required to travel. And this line allowed trains to get up to speeds up to 70 miles an hour. And if you guys know where the old Phoebe snow route used to be, that's today's US 6 and 11. And if it wasn't for this line being built, we wouldn't have US 6 and 11, that's for sure. So we got some old ties here that have got to be replaced. So a bunch of them along this part. Like I said, there's a lot of new ties over there because they are working on this line. Looks like we got a tie completely disintegrated here. So most of the plates here are from 1939. So you guys have a pretty good idea when this was really upgraded to mainline standards. It's 1939, let's see if we 
1937, 1942. Oh, we got an old one right here. Let's take a look at that. So there's no clear date on it. Yeah, some of these, it's going to be a little hard to try to find a date. But all I do know is this style you're looking at right here is from the 1920s. We're going to take a look at this one here. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to get any ones that we can actually get a date off them. 1927. So back then when the Dillon W built this, the Dillon W built this with what's most likely 90 pounds per yard rail. So I know a lot of you guys have been saying something to me about it. You know, the Clark Summit Halster cutoff was built with small rail. And then as larger sizes were introduced, the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western upgraded the main line in order to meet those requirements. So I believe in 1925, the Delaware, Lackawanna and Western swapped out the 90 pounds per yard rail. And then they put in 130 pounds area rail, which in today's standards, you can find that over on the Bloomsburg branch. Um, and you can find it over at Steamtown as well. Look at all these old ones here. This is what you'll find over on the Kaiser. you find them up here. This is pure DL&W design. Looks like they put a transition rail in. We're gonna see if we can get a date. 136RE STN 2019. Okay. This rail's from 2019. So it's relatively new. It's a transition rail that was installed in place of an old joint that was starting to well, so we got some problems here. You guys can see where it's all muddy. So what that's going to lead up to is when trains pass through, it's going to cause the track to bounce up and down. You know, which I see that a lot, especially on these older tracks like this. Got some old telegraph poles. Oh. Looks like we found some remnants of the old freight line. Yeah, we just found some remnants right here. The old freight line. These go back pretty far in time. They go back to the 1930s. You can see here, these are all from the 30s. And then you got some from the 1910s right there. Now, not exactly sure what this is, but I think this is part of an old signal or something. Um, Cause back then there used to be semaphores here. Now, I don't know the exact spots where the semaphores were, but I have a feeling this is for a semaphore signal. So we do have some remnants of some semaphores that were here back in the 1910s before the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western upgraded to the light signals. And another notable thing about Dillon W tracks is that the main lines were always higher than the sidings. It's, it's, that's just how it is here with the Dalton siding. So you can see here, it's much lower than the main line itself. And by the way, this track was upgraded quite a bit throughout the years. Um, Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western upgraded it quite a bit. Because further up the line, we're going to have some old rail to show you. So I think it's pretty cool that we get to show you guys that. we are see if we can get a date on the siding here. Okay, here we go. 136 RE VT RMSM says Japanese, June 2002. Mm -hmm. Look on the other rail here. Yep, exact same thing. Yep, June 2002. All right, you can tell the siding hasn't had much use. There's a, there's a bit of rust starting to form. Now, if we come up on the main here, you can see that the rails are a lot shinier and they're starting to get like a mirrored finish. This line does see a lot of use. 
it does see about three to five trains per day. And I'm saying three to five, because usually it's three trains on average. And sometimes extras run through, get like intermodals, you get reroutes. Now before that, before this PSR came out, we had, um, we would get at least six to 14 trains per day. We'd be hearing a train every hour. Now what I have been trying to find along here was like remnants of old signals and stuff like that. Cause there used to be uh, quite a few signals on this part of the line all belong here. You can see they had to blast all this away in order to create this passageway for the Clark Summit Halstead cut off. You can see we got some fallen rocks here. Looks like we had a, we had a, quite a bit of rain too and they've even been cutting trees down up here. They've been knocking them down. So you don't want to overgrow it onto the line then have something really bad happen. You can see here is more of the rock face, so they're gonna go ahead and show you guys that. Look at that. You can see the reason why I can tell this is blasted away. I don't know how well you'll you'll be able to see it, but there are some drilling marks in the rocks here where they had to blast all this away in order to allow for the track to be constructed. You'll probably see it better over, yeah, you can see it better over here where they had to blast all the rocks away in order to create this line. You guys can see where the drilling marks were. So like I said, right here used to be the old freight line. This is the passenger line. And right over here would have been the loading track, which is today's Dalton siding. But I do believe at one point in time, there was actually a siding here um, at one point in time, because this was double tracked. So, see we find you some more dates here. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, here we go, we found one. So a little different. 132 RE. CC, BSCL Steelton, so that's where I was born, Steelton, Pennsylvania, January 1965. I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but there it is. January 1965. And this route I want to say is from the 70s because this is Erie Lackawanna style trackage. We're going to go ahead and take a look. I believe it's on this side of the track. Yeah, here we go. 13225 RE CC Tennessee USA 1971. So I'm gonna zoom in on that so you guys can see that. Year is 1971. There's not there's no determination exactly how many hash marks there are. So I wouldn't be able to determine exactly what month it was rolled. But we do know the year, which is 1971. Got some beautiful rock face here. You can see just how far back in time this went to when this was all being blasted away. And I'm sure you guys can imagine just what it's like, you know, to, if you guys hear the quarry blast, or those of you that work in a quarry, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. They had to blast all this away in order to put these tracks here. And up that way is where there's some there's some housing up there. It's part of the hunting that's part of the Huntington Woods housing development, uh, which is relatively new. Uh, if you want to say it was put in the 20, I want to say the 2000s it was put in. Like I said before. They had to blast all this away. Now this line here used to serve passenger and freight trains. It served the Phoebe Snow passenger train and some of the other Delaware, Lackawanna and Western passenger trains. And this line also served freight 
But really the reason why this was built, like I said in the beginning of the video, this line was built between 1912 and 1915 in order to allow passenger trains to run at higher speeds where there's less curves and it allows passenger trains to travel at speeds of 70 miles an hour. And the Delaware Lackawanna in Western was also well known for serving the coal mining regions of Northeastern PA, which there really wouldn't be any up here because this is more like rural territory. But over down in the Scranton and Taylor area, the DL&W was well known for serving the once rich coal yards of Northeastern PA. And that's why, that's why our part of Pennsylvania got its name. The, the, I forget exactly what it was called, but I know like the Lehigh Valley, I think got called the Black Diamond because they, they carried a lot of coal. Um, yeah, and DL and W carried a lot of coal as well. And there are, there is in fact a DL and W LV connection over at the LV Coxton yard in Piston, Pennsylvania. Um, we might be going down that way later tonight. So we'll try to get a little video for you over in the station area. But yeah, you guys can't see her. This is all hand laid. It's all done by a team of experts. And it looks like right over here, looks like we got some sort of, looks like some sort of old access road here. Not exactly sure what this was. It looks like it appeared to be an old access road. So I find it very interesting that, so I've never noticed this before uh, when I was up here. Um, so this is pretty cool. You can see this old access road and you got your old school style culvert. Got a little pond with the dam right there. It's definitely some pretty cool stuff. I would say this probably dates back to around 1910s, 1920s. And then I think this is how, I think this is how you got to the tracks. And there's also a little farm up here. I don't know if it's still in business or not, but there was a little farm up here. You can see the creek right there. There was a farm up here. I think it's a wheat farm. So then when grain needed to be transported, the DL and W, they would pick up the grain and then they would deliver it all the way down. I think they would transfer it over to the Pocono Main where uh, where it goes to the where to where it goes to the grain mill over near Mount Pocono. There is a grain mill up that way. So when we when we work on more of these videos, uh, when we're out documenting these different places. Um, we'll try to show you guys that. So coming up on my right is going to be something relatively interesting. Um, it, it must have been the it must have been the place for another signal because I saw a concrete base in the ground. And I haven't we haven't gotten it on the video yet. So I fear as we're documenting this part, we'll show you guys that. So it's relatively interesting. Because like I said, it's not often you get to see the old remnants of the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western Railroad. Especially on this part. You know, after Conrail ripped everything out. You know, it's not surprising. But it's right over here. I believe there was a signal here at one point in time. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know if we're going to get to it. So it looks a little sketchy. But I'm going to try to show you guys the best I can. Yeah, it's just a little sketchy. I don't want to take any chances here. But I want to show you guys. That's an old signal base right there. So this must have been a layback point at one point. And you can even see right there, it says layback point. So I think this was an original layback point. Uh, I don't know if it, this is where passenger trains would have gone or if it was freight. But I do believe that this is where trains would even outlaw you know, if a crew ran out of time, they'd be outlawing. Looks like we got another old access road here. And I believe this goes up to Fuller Road. I'm not exactly sure where this goes. I believe this goes up to Fuller Road. This is an old access road here. And the maintenance of way. And of course the shuttles that bring the train crews to duty. They would come along this road here 
down by the tracks and their train would be waiting over either over on the siding or on the main and it was pretty cool we're gonna walk up a little bit to show you guys you see this is an old access road that went up to four now coming up will be the four road overpass um, where the road would pass over the tracks now unfortunately the bridge is no longer here because like I think what happened was it was too weak or something like that and they ended up having to tear out the bridge so that was a pretty uncommon it was a pretty sad experience because I was not alive at the time they tore it well me yeah, I was young I don't know I forget I don't know exactly when the bridge was torn out. Well, you can see the old access road. We got some stonework. Uh, looks like a stonework could be from the 1920s. Um, see you guys a little bit closer here. You can see we got some nice stonework. That was looks like a handmade stone wall. It's not often you get to see the handmade stone walls. So I'm imagining with these stones, it would take quite a bit of quite a bit of workers in order to be able to lift all the stones and place them on the wall. See, we got some old remnants here. Uh, well, it would have been, I think, another main, because um, this is definitely wide enough for po possibly a third span. So if you look off to my left here, you'll see where the over the four road overpass was. The road, the, tr the overpass, the road went right over the tracks here. And this is how the this is how road traffic could get over. I think it's to La Plume. I think it's a connection to get to La Plume. Um, I'm not quite exactly familiar with some of these spots. I will admit that, but I am trying to explain everything to the best of my ability um, from the knowledge that I do have about this line. Cause my my great grandfather worked for the railroad. You guys can see some beautiful hand-built stonework. And right here is where the bridge was. You can see the fence up there in the old road. Now, I did check that part out. Uh, we didn't get it on film, unfortunately. But uh, maybe someday we'll try to get it on film for you so you can actually see that. But I would say the overpass was put in probably sometime in the, I don't know, probably 50s or 60s. You can see where the you can see where the supports are. So definitely pretty historical and very, very, very neat that we get to see a lot of this stuff. Because it's not often anymore that we actually get to see like the old overpass is still here. You can see where the fence is up there. So we're gonna keep working our way north. Uh, we are coming up. Actually, we just came upon that rail. I wanted to show you guys. It's, a, it's an early deal and W rail from the 50s. It's going to be a little hard to read, but I pretty much I figured out when it was laid. I don't know how well you guys can read that, but there is some info on here that I can say. 1951. So, so this rail appears to have been laid in March 1951. So you can see it right there. It's this Looks like BS, so I'm guessing this rail would have been 132 RE CC BSCO Lackawanna, March 1951. It's it's very pretty, but you can, you can see the year right there. So yeah, this is from 1951, so it's very interesting. See one of the older rails still here. This one I think is 1972. So I remember documenting dates before on this one. Yeah, see, it says right there, 1972. Now this stretch gets a bit more interesting because further up that way, we have the right of way for the old telegraph poles. And as you can see, there's there's quite a few of them still standing. A lot of people have thought, oh, Conrail ripped everything out. But no, there's stuff still here. Looks like we got another older rail. We're going to take a look at that. See if we can find you a date. One thirty one R E O H B S C O Lackawanna, 
uh, looks like January 1943. And then this one down here, I believe it's not, we don't know exactly where we're gonna look. 1936. Okay, so two rails welded into each other. 1943, 1936. You can see as we start working our way further up here, you can see that this the track, you can see how it's got like the older ballast that they, I don't know who would have laid it. I don't know if it was Yuri Lackawanna or Conrail. You can see we got some more stonework here. Some more handmade stonework, which I think is really, really cool. That there's the stone walls are still here. You know, this is definitely a beautiful right of way. You can see where the freight line would have been right here. So this is definitely wide enough for three spans of track. So that was pretty cool. Sadly, there are no remnants left of the third track, unfortunately. It's all been ripped up. At least we got the passenger line and the siding still around, which I think is fabulous. Let's see if we can get another date. Because this part here, there's quite a bit more dates we can get. Probably from go way back in time. Should I show you guys here? Oh, looks like this one's on the other side. Oh. Alright, this one looks like a little uncommon here. 13128RE-OH. Whoa, guys, Inland USA. Okay. All right, so that's pretty uncommon. We don't get, we don't have much inland around here. Looks like January 1944. So it's some pretty old rail, and you can even tell it's it's got double mushroom. It's got one on this side, and it's got one on this side. So definitely some really old rail. I'm surprised it hasn't been replaced because this one was replaced. Looks like July 2008. So there's really not much uh, historical wise that I know about this part. But uh, we are going to be coming upon the Benton Road overpass. So I've been wanting to show you guys that for a while. Because there's an absolutely beautiful view from up here. Especially like at sundown. You know, it's really beautiful scenery. Looks like we got 1942 on most of these plates, and then 2008 on this side. You guys can see a lot of old ties over there. I don't know exactly where they would have came from, but I think they would have came from this track here. You can see the right of way for the, uh... yeah, it looks like we got a down telegraph pole up there. And I know a lot of people, they like to pick the telegraph poles clean because they like to go after the insulators because I heard they're worth quite a bit of value. Someone said a Hemingway 40 goes for like 10 or $12 just for a single insulator. Uh, it's popular amongst the collector community. You can see here, that's been picked pretty clean. Yeah, this is the old right-of-way for the service vehicles. They used to service the telegraph lines. Which, unfortunately, there are very few of the telegraph lines still standing to this day. As you can see here. We're going to see if we can show you guys that. See, show you guys the right-of-way here. So, I believe this goes back... I believe this goes back well over 100 years ago. It's a little sketchy here. We're going to have to be careful. Don't want to slip and fall. Because just like that, rocks can shift under your weight. And it could cause you some problems. Yeah, so here it is. This is the old right of way. You can see we got some, uh, looks like we got some stumps. So this is where the old insulators would have gone. And yeah, right here. This was wide enough for service vehicles to come through here 
and this is what allowed them to service telegraph lines. See, there's quite a few of them still here. But unfortunately, there's not many of them left. Like I said, there's not much. Looks like somebody looks like an old cabin over there. I'm gonna zoom in on that for you. So I figured we'd show you guys this old historic right of way. Um, we're gonna try to get back down here. Cause like I said, this is a little bit sketchy. You know, we don't want to slip and fall. So we're gonna try to see if we can work our way down. I figured I'd show you guys the old right of way. Um, so that's really, that was something of interest. Uh, a lot of people have been asking me, do you know if the old right of way for the telegraph lines is still there? And I was like, I do not know. I will check it out, however. And so here we are, we're checking it out. Okay, you guys can see, we're gonna try to work our way down here. It's a little, like I said, it's a little bit sketchy. You know, because there's potential for injury. So you gotta be super careful when you're going up these embankments like this. You gotta have the, just the right footing. That way you don't cause yourself any injuries. All right, so we're back on the main right of way here. So we can get you another date. There's really not much known about this part. Even I don't know that much about this little area here. I know more about like, the old Dalton station, which is just down that way. Yeah, and it's a nice little wooded area here. Yeah, let's Got a nice little housing area up that way, which I think is pretty cool. So lucky those of you that live over there and you get to see the trains. See, we still got the beautiful, beautiful architecture. You can see we got some more down telegraph poles. And it looks like the down telegraph poles have been picked clean because a lot of people watch for the poles to fall. And then when the poles have fallen, they collect the insulators. But I understand why people collect them. They got a lot of value to them. You know, some people value just having them in their collections. Uh, and I've got quite a few insulators myself. Cause like I said, I am a big, I like these old insulators and I, I collect and preserve them. So that way many more, gen oh guys, what's this? I think I just found, it looks like another signal base. Not exactly sure what I found. I don't know if this is a fallen rock or if this is something historical related. I'm not sure. It's been quite a bit of difficulty trying to determine what was here. You see a stone wall is no longer there. So we're gonna be nearing our destination. Um, we do got a couple interesting things to show you up that way. Um, going to be approaching mile post 145. Looks like they're doing some work over here. Yeah, we're at mile post 660.2. This work was done a few months ago. September 20th, 2023. Looks like that was done. Yeah, 920, 2023. So that's relatively recent. You can see here, this is where the old right of way was for the service vehicles. And we do have some posts up there, some old concrete posts. So I'm not sure if there was a fence there or not, but I have a feeling that's what was there uh, with these concrete posts. I guess there was a fence there. Okay, so you got a little housing development up there. Right, sorry guys, I'm a little snuffly today. Most likely getting over a cold. But yeah, you can see where, where it would have been. Looks like we got another pole here. It's either falling down or it looks like it's gonna fall. So you got some telegraphs, some telephone lines here. 
And it looks like here we got what well, looks like a little historic drain culvert. Not exactly sure what this was. I have a feeling this was a culvert at one point in time. Not sure. It looks like uh it looks like it might be it might be something over there. We're gonna take a look. Looks like an old sign was over there. Looks like an old sign. I'm probably guessing from the Delaware and Hudson when this was the south line. Yeah, there's a little view here for you. Uh, you can see we're almost at our destination. Like I said, there are a few interesting things, more interesting things to show. So we're gonna try to show them while we're up this way. If I'm not mistaken, I think the telegraph poles were still right on this part of the tracks. I'm not exactly certain, but I think the old telegraph poles were still on that side. Over on this side, there's no trace of telegraph poles. And there's a really steep embankment over there. So you definitely want to watch out. Yeah, for any, any typical railroad, this would be any typical scenery for a railroad or a rail fan. Or in our case, railroad historians, where we document these tracks, you know, and bring you history. Looks like mostly all new ties have been put in here. I did see a very few old ones on this part from like the 1920s. So I don't know exactly what would have been here. Um, looks like we got quite a bit of space, so I don't exactly know what would have been here. I would assume probably some little service station or something. See, we got some, uh, looks like we got some ties. So I wonder if there was actually another track here at one point. Looks like, looks like we might have had another track here. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I couldn't tell you guys, but just going based on what's here, we could probably guess. Yeah, like I said, there's a steep embankment over here. There is one on the other side when, once you get towards Benton Road. There is, a, there is another steep embankment you gotta watch out for. Um, Cause there have been tragic incidents of people daring to climb them and then they fall down. There's Now I don't know of any incidents up here that this has happened, but I know back in like the 1940s and 1950s, people used to do that all the time. And that's what results in a lot of injuries now a little interesting part here. I think there was a, I think there was a small track here. So I guess it was used for storage or something. I'm um, going by the width of the road bed. It looks like there was a third track here at one point that would have been used for storage of cars and stuff like that. You know, when the DL and W didn't need them, they would just, you know, they just store them up here. So I, I do get it, you know, gotta do what you gotta do if you don't have room to put your car somewhere else you gotta put them on a storage track so i totally get it yeah definitely another road bay here so you can tell we got some old ballast here it looks like we got some coal deposits too so there might have been a there might have been a mine here i don't know could have been a mine because going by the what we have here I would definitely say we got a, we had a mine at one point in time over on this spot. We're gonna see if there's any trace of the old milepost. Um, Cause I know I don't know if the old milepost is still up here. I didn't get a chance to give a proper look, but I could probably imagine to guess that there was, or that it could still be here not certain so we're gonna take a look here see what we can uh 
See if we can figure out. Looks like they've been doing some more work on this part of the track here. You can see there's some more fresh joints have been welded together. Probably had to replace some rail up here. But yeah, there's definitely a mine here. Looks like we got an old vice. I don't know why there'd be an old vice laying around. But it's pretty interesting. So I don't know who would throw their vice up here. It doesn't make any sense. Anyway, like I said, there is a there was a mine here. Which is surprising because one would think, you know, there wouldn't be a mine here. But it turns out there must have been a little one. Nice big deposit there. So it looks like we have reached our destination. We're at mile post 660, or in this case, 145. It's sort of in Benton Road. And it looks like there's no trace of the old mile post. I think the old mile post actually would have been right here. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it was right here. It's a neat little spot. And just, like I say, you have to watch out. Super steep embankment. Don't do what people did back in the 50s. Because back then in the 50s, people used to do a lot of dangerous shit. That's why it's always important. Be super careful. Now before we close out the video, I want to show you guys the view. I uh, see I got a really nice view up here. This is probably one of my favorites. You know, if you're up here like in the early morning, you get a nice view of the sunrise. If you're up here in the evening hours, you get a nice view of the sunset. I'm gonna show you the overpass here. Cause right down there is obviously Benton Road. So I figure we'll show you guys that real quick. Beautiful area, like I say, you got a really nice view. It's probably what a lot of people like is when they can get a good view of the valley below. Which we definitely do have that. There's Benton Road. Alright, so that's gonna do it for this video. Um before we do before we go, we're gonna show you one more thing. So I think I might have found another date. It's of interest and we're going to go a little bit further because there is one day I want to show you guys that I didn't get to show on video yet. Um, we're going to try to do that, hopefully. You can see here, there's some really well done ballast. It's a really well done. Yeah, it's, it still looks like the original DL&W, that's for sure. Definitely very historical, you know, when it comes to these old tracks. You know, a lot of people don't think, you know, to do a lot of research like I've done. So, oh, guy, oh, guys, look at that. There's a goose. If you guys know the game Duck, Duck, Goose, well, there you have it. Duck, Duck, Goose. Looks like we got an old 1934 plate here. It's like from 1934. Yeah, 1934. It says it right there. So cool. Those are pretty rare on here. Alright. So like I said, we are coming upon the date. I want to show you guys. It's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you know these old tracks. You know, there's always some sort of history embedded in them. We're gonna try to show you guys here. Looks like we got a newer rail here. Yep, look at that. 1987. All right, 1987. I think this is the one here I want to show you guys. Yep, 
Yep, here we go. 131 RE OH BSCO Lackawanna 1938. Look at that, 1938. It's the year my dad was born. All right, that's going to do it for this video. Um, part two, we're going to be going from here to La Plume. Um, I'll show you guys the old freight depot. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions or any information that might be useful, please put it in the comments below. I greatly appreciate it.